Thank you, Andy. Congratulations to the graduates today. It is an honor to be here and share your day. I know that it hasn't been easy to get here. Out of respect, I'd like to pause and think of all the hard work, the lost sleep, the filling of your days with lectures and assignments and projects and papers. I think of all the other responsibilities that you had while you were working toward this day. It is quite an accomplishment and I honor you. Congratulations. Here we are in 2020, and it is certainly an interesting year. While this year has surfaced some unique challenges, in reality, we have experienced a rate of change over the last few years that we've never seen before. The velocity of this change presents many challenges for us. The basis for much of this acceleration has been technology. Yes, technology has been and will continue to be the great accelerator. With change comes both opportunity and threat. There are jobs today that will no longer exist in the future, and there'll be new jobs that we haven't even invented yet. While this is daunting, it is also very exciting. This new world requires us to look at our careers in a different way. Your hard work and what we are celebrating today has allowed you to take a very important step in future-proofing your career. This new world will require us to be nimble and agile. It will require us to move out of our comfort zones. It will actually require us to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. When I think of the person who will be successful in the coming decades, two attributes come to mind. First, being terribly curious. And secondly, relentlessly pursuing a better way. This person will do very well in the future. Everett Harper, a successful entrepreneur and futurist, says it quite well. Move to the edge and declare it your center. This means stretching and growing and reaching to the edge until it feels like you own it and at which time you need to step to the edge again. I've always loved living on the edge. Of course, in a very responsible way. I like the excitement of new challenges. Living life this way is rarely boring. Personally, I've made many mistakes in my career. Some make me cringe, but most make me smile. They make me smile because at this point, they're pretty funny. And with each one of those mistakes, I had a great lesson. Many years ago, when I took my first job in technology sales, I really didn't know what I was doing. But what I realized was that there were people around me who could help. My biggest weakness was my lack of knowledge of technology. Early on, I became friends with the technical brains of the operation. His name was Pete. His name is still Pete, and he's a very dear friend today. I began asking questions just here and there. So one day he said, come to my office at 4 p.m. with all of your questions and we'll go through them. That was code for, I'm happy to help, but these interruptions are not very efficient. I set up a routine. I was, I'd save all my questions for the day and show up at his door precisely at 4 p.m. I learned two things very quickly. Number one, the more organized I was, the more I would learn. And secondly, I better not ask the same question twice. Pete expected me to progress, and he was going to lose interest if I wasn't as committed to my success as he was. I spent two years at that company, and I walked out with a great deal of expertise. Certainly, what I learned in college was a foundation, but I had to be eager to learn more. While I can never replace the friendship that I have with Pete, the expertise that he helped me with is readily available from many sources today. This hyper-connected world gives us lots and lots of opportunity to tap into many sources of expertise. I'm a huge fan of online learning. The platforms provide us the choice of what size bites of information we're gonna take and it opens our worlds to so many possibilities. 
as we have new experiences and new jobs, we can be explorers. We can course correct. We can let our curiosity be at our guideposts. Because of what is of interest to us, what piques our curiosity, is often what we're good at because we're excited about it, because we want to know more. Several years after I left the company where I met Pete, I stepped to the edge again. I competed for and accepted a position as the sales team lead for the telecommunications industry. I was working for a major technology manufacturer at the time. And again, candidly, I had no expertise to be successful. I was not comfortable. I was certainly not competent. This time, my Pete showed up as a customer. I don't recall his real name, but I knew the technology. I didn't understand the telecommunications industry. This Pete suggested that I take a class from a local college entitled Introduction to Telecommunications Management. Brilliant, I thought. I got the information, I signed up, and I began my journey. Rather than taking one class, I finished my master's in telecommunications management. I built another foundation. I became a subject matter expert on the industry. This was a long time ago. The technologies that we talked about then are long gone. And you might think what I learned is in cold storage. That is far from the case. This historical perspective gives me the foundation for understanding what's happening today. I understand how we got universal telephone service in all the homes across the United States. I understand the effects of the breakup of AT&T and the Bell System monopolies. I understand what happened when the Telecommunications Act of 1996 came in and the innovation and the competitive environments that we have today as a result. I'm able to form a clear point of view on the deployment of broadband and the implications of 5G wireless networks because of the knowledge that I got from that education in the 90s. So throughout my exploration, I learned that I love studying emerging technologies and their effects on the future. The more I study, the more I wanna know, and the more I feel I need to know. This field of study makes me move to the edge. As I said before, it's not always comfortable. About four years ago, I had the opportunity to speak to a large group of college students about the application of artificial intelligence in the area of healthcare. I felt like I was far from an expert. I studied, I compiled information from many sources, and I practiced and practiced and practiced. And when the day arrived, I was prepared. I walked in to that room and I found out that the university chancellor and the dean of the medical school were gonna be in attendance. Yes, I freaked out. I took some deep breaths. I reminded myself that I was prepared and I began my presentation. I tried not to look at them, but these two guys were sitting in the front row and they never smiled and I thought I was bombing. The presentation was over. I began to pick up my things, and the two of them came over, and we launched into a riveting conversation around the future of many professions in the healthcare industry. I, had I not been prepared, had I not been dedicated to gaining expertise, I would have bombed, and I certainly would not have been able to hold my own in that conversation. I hope that you see a theme. Continuing lifelong learning is the cornerstone of rich experiences. It is an essential component of future-proofing your career. I encourage you to continue to make the leaps, take on the challenges, be curious, and be relentlessly committed to your own expertise. You are here because you worked hard and you invested in yourselves. Please continue. It will be the foundation for a very rich and interesting life. I wish you well, and again, congratulations to you on a job well done.